All right, everybody. Goodness me, this has been a project trying to get up and running. I bought this thing here to try and help me with my YouTube videos and tell me why I cannot figure out how to get it to record. Um, I've just spent the past hour trying to do it, so we're just gonna go with the regular mic on the camera and hopefully it works and this will be a prop for today. So we're gonna get started. If you're not familiar with my channel before, I am a PhD candidate right now in veterinary microbiology. I'm not a veterinarian. What I do is I do the research for you so that you don't have to, so that you can get a unbiased point of view on anything relating to animals. Okay, so how many of you have taken your dogs into the vet and have gone in for vaccinations and you've been told that they offer only one year vaccines. You might be quite shocked that there are one year and three year vaccines for multiple of the core vaccines for dogs. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what is the difference between one year and three year vaccines? Are they worth it? And what is my general opinion? So let's do a crash course in what vaccines are to begin with because not every vaccine is made equal. Now in the field of vet med for dogs there are typically three different types of vaccines. So you've got your modified live vaccine. Now I I guess I'll grab I've got my notes here. Uh, a modified live vaccine let's pretend that this is the organism right so you're basically doing something that's gonna modify it so that the organism isn't as effective at infecting an animal. Now, the second type of vaccine is a killed vaccine. A killed vaccine is basically you do something to that organism to kill it, right? So you're, so you're crumpling it up, killing it, and now it's dead, but it's intact. And you're introducing it into the animal, hopefully the immune system responds and, you know, you get antibody production, long lasting, um, memory antibodies. Now, the third type of vaccine is either called a subunit or a recombinant vaccine. Now, this is basically when you take the organism itself and you rip it up into tiny little pieces and you take one specific part of that organism and put it in the vaccine. Now, as a rule of thumb, the more live the organism is, the better the immune response is gonna be. So chances are that a modified live vaccine is going to induce a longer lasting immune response than, for example, a killed or a subunit vaccine. All right, so let's go over core vaccines really fast. I'm gonna put a list up right here from the AVMA. It's available on their website, and this is from 2017 AVMA guidelines. So these are all of the core vaccines for dogs. You might be really familiar with some of these. Parvovirus, adenovirus, parainfluenza, distemper virus, uh, and then of course, rabies. And on the left-hand side, uh, right beside the virus names, you can see what type of vaccine is typically given. So most of these guys are modified live virus vaccines, which means that they're gonna induce a really good immune response. The only one that is typically a killed vaccine is rabies virus. And that makes sense because rabies is not a virus that you wanna mess with. <laughs> On the side here to the right hand side, you can see the recommendations from AVMA. So if you're walking into a vet clinic and they say that they recommend only one year vaccines, they're actually going against AVMA guidelines unless they have a very good reason. Now, just really quick, I want to make sure that you're understanding that this is after your dog has received its core vaccinations as a puppy, right? So you vaccinated it the three times as a puppy, it got its rabies vaccination, and then you did the one year boosters after that, right? And then after that one year, then this comes into play. Some of you might be thinking, okay, well, but when I go into a vet clinic, they tell me that they need to stagger the vaccines. So they'll do three-year vaccines, but they'll stagger them so that the rabies vaccination isn't given with the distemper parvo vaccination or something like that. So let's talk about this study that I'm gonna put off to the side here. And yes, there is a reason for that staggering, um, but it does not apply to all animals. So one of the reasons why a vet will stagger vaccines is because it lessens the chances of an adverse event following a vaccination. 
Now you can see that in the study that I've put off to the side here that each additional vaccine does significantly increase the risk of an adverse reaction. But again, it's not a cookie cutter thing for every dog. Chances are if you've done your puppy vaccines and your dog didn't react, uh, that you're going to be perfectly fine. On top of that, the adverse reactions are less observed in bigger dogs. So it's a little bit more relevant for smaller breeds, but for bigger breeds, it's a lot less relevant. So I would say there's two big reasons for the staggering. First of all, adverse effects you want to avoid, um, allergic reactions when you're giving vaccines to dogs. But right on par with that, and I would maybe suggest it's even higher, is a reason that involves the business side as well as trying to get pets in for wellness exams more frequently. So we're going to talk a little bit about that later on as we go into this in more depth. Let's get right into the studies that show how long your dog's immunity actually lasts when it gets a vaccine. Now I'm going to put the reference for this study right here. And um, this guy, Dr. Schultz, actually has done quite a bit of studies on canine vaccination protocols and how long immunity actually lasts in dogs. I'm going to put up a table from this study right here and you can see that it lists all of the different types of viruses that are involved in core vaccinations and the estimated minimum DOI. DOI means duration of immunity. Now you see two different columns, one with C's in brackets and one with S's in brackets. And the C's are animals that were actually challenged with the virus. So live virus was injected into the animal and they watched to see what happened. S is testing animals for antibodies. So serology, we're looking for whether or not there are still antibodies present after that animal had been vaccinated. And you can see that across the board, it is at least, if not over three years of protective immunity. So it's very different depending on what specific vaccine you get and the specific virus, but across the board, three year vaccination boosters look like they're being supported. Now this is not the only study that has been done. I am talking about multiple studies that have been done. Let's bring up another one right here. You can see age and long-term protective immunity. So. Some people might be like, okay, well, what about if my dog is nine years old? Because clearly the immune system, it, it's not the same when you're young versus when you're older. And they still see the exact same thing, that long-term immunity is produced even in older aged animals. Here we have yet another study showing us that a three year duration of immunity is common in dogs that receive the core vaccinations. So this is a study that did challenges in dogs, which is like the most aggressive form of measuring the immune system response. And again, same conclusions. All right, so let's take a look back at the AVMA guidelines for vaccination. Now, some of you that are really perceptive might have noticed in the rabies column off to the side when we look at recommendations for boosters, it says that veterinarians are allowed discretion in administering either a one year or three year labeled rabies vaccine. So I have a study up right here that looks at duration of immunity after rabies vaccination in dogs. And the duration of immunity extended well beyond three years. And so you can see here, I found something from AVMA from a conference that they had. And it says that generally the only difference between the one year and three year rabies vaccine is how it's labeled. So this really does bring up the question about why there is one year vaccines versus three year vaccines. And I'm not gonna speak to extenuating circumstances. I realize that sometimes vets have very important reasons for administering one year vaccines, but in general, this is the main reason why. So I've got a quote right here that I pulled off of the internet and it says, if you want to ensure that your dog receives the highest standard of care and protection, he or she should be seen by your veterinarian for a wellness exam at least on an annual basis. And I do agree with that statement. I would say that if you want to ensure that your dog receives the absolute highest standard of care, that is the way to go. But to be completely truthful, the main reason for administering one year vaccines, I would say is to uh, make sure that clients are coming back 
with their animals on a yearly basis. Now, is that really important for older dogs? Definitely. If your dog is a senior aged dog, they should be getting wellness exams every single year. But if you have a two year old dog, in extenuating circumstances, you might have something really nasty that pops up like bone cancer, osteosarcoma, right? But in general, your dog is gonna be healthy. Is it required to do a one year check on a young dog? Probably not. And I think the thing that makes me a, a little bit sad is that this area in vet med is really kept in the shadows. It's not talked about a lot. So I've got right here a statement off of Ontario Veterinary Medical Association. So that's a province in Canada um, and I'm in Canada. <laughs> and uh, basically it says, do I need to get my pet vaccinated every year? This topic is currently under investigation within veterinary medicine. Unfortunately, the duration of immunity of each vaccine is not currently known. Now, that is a true statement, not each vaccine, but the vast majority of core vaccinations, we do have studies on the duration of immunity. So my opinion would be that that statement is, it is accurate, but it's not attempting to present the actual information that we have. So when we look right after that statement, you can see that a couple of sentences later, they start going into, that's why physical examinations that are done every year are extremely important, da 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 da. So it really highlights one of the main reasons why these one year boosters are being given. So after a deep dive into uh, vaccines and duration of immunity and all of that for dogs, what are my personal opinions? Well, I do think that it's important when you go into a vet to give them the benefit of the doubt and hear them out. I also think it is the responsibility of the vet to give you adequate reasons why they'll be doing a one-year vaccination versus a three-year vaccination. And you have every right to have that explanation. But the number one thing you don't wanna do if you're questioning vaccinations is not vaccinate your dogs. I'm gonna to be totally honest, I'm the furthest thing from an anti-vaxxer that you can get because I have a master's degree in infectious diseases, I'm doing a PhD in veterinary microbiology, I, I'm on board with vaccines all the way. But I am not on board with over vaccinating and I'm not on board with wasting client dollars that could be put towards things that are going to be more beneficial for the health of the animals. The, the number one takeaway is that vaccines are not cookie cutter. So even though in a study you might see that the antibodies typically last, you know, past seven years or something like that, your dog might not have the same response. So I tend to follow AVMA guidelines unless there's a really good reason not to. All right, so I hope that this topic was something that some of you were questioning and I hope that this gave you a lot of things to think about. I think an informed owner is a good owner and so as with everything that I do, I'm gonna put all of the links to the studies down below. You can access them if you want and I will see you guys very soon, hopefully, in another video. Take care.